We're here at the Oval for a Vitality T20 Masterclass with not only one of England's best, but one of international cricket's best, Joss Butler. What a shot that is. Nailed by Butler. Oh, and that'll do for England. Joss Butler, absolutely magnificent. OK, Joss, I'm going to give you some throwdowns just to help you warm up. But before we do that, I want you to talk us through your basic setup. Yeah, um, pretty, well, I try and start with a pretty traditional grip. Um, I know it's something, my, I'm quite a right-handed person, so I can feel this hand get quite dominant. Sometimes when I pick the bat up, I can feel it just move round, and that's... So the Vs, the old-fashioned Vs. A little bit the other, other side of where, so if you put the bat down and picked it up properly, I'd probably be a little bit further round. Um, Mark Garraway tried to change me, so I'd almost start open and then as I pick it up, I just <laughs> couldn't stop doing it. So it's something I've just worked with. So that's my grip. Um, I take middle as a guard, as a general. Yeah. Um, actually, Is that 2020 test cricket anything? Uh, to start with, yeah. I, I think something I've been trying to, or I try and do is move around dependent on the game situation or type of bowler. Um, but if I was facing right arm over, first ball of the innings I'd generally ask for middle and, and that's where I'd start but I've actually started to now go a lot deeper in my crease so I'm trying to start here and then get back into this position so my back foot probably gets to on around or just outside off stump and then I've, what I've found is I'm keeping a, a bit bigger base when I've started here sometimes I throw my hands at it and this stays short whereas at least when I'm here even if I don't move again I'm actually in a position where not in a bad place to hit the ball still. Well, but I always think your eyes are very level when you're looking down the crease at the bowl. Yeah, so I, I, as well, being right-sided as I am, I feel like I watch the ball with my right eye. So that's something, so in my setup, I'd face up and I almost try and have my right eye to what would be uh, off stump at the other end if I was that. So I almost try and get that eye on there. And actually, when the bowl is running up, I'm actually looking at the stumps. I'm almost as a checkpoint of, is my head in a good place? It's not really till that late that I actually look at the bowler. So um, I'm almost checking on that stump and then I feel in a good place to go. I almost start to shake my shoulder for some reason as well. <laughs> I think that is almost in, in a, to relax. Um, that tends to get me a bit more in a relaxed mode. If this gets tense, every, everything in here gets tense and I don't like that. Morning or afternoon of a game, what sort of practice do you want from throwdowns? Yes, yeah, so a big thing about uh, day of the game for me is about preparation. All my practice should have been done the day before, so I'd just come out and I'd just like to have a few underarms, uh, go through just my shapes, just hit a few balls, and, and I just go through this, the same routine every time of some drives, some back foot punches, cuts and pulls. And, so, where do you want me uh, about? Yeah, here? about there, and just some underarm half volleys. Yeah, nice. <laughs> if I'm feeling like I need a full net the day of a game, then I don't think I've prepared properly. So uh, I try and make sure all of that is out the way. This is just, you know, this looks yeah. pointless to an extent, but it's just easy. It makes me feel good about myself. Um, and then I hit some, you know, some pulls and some cuts. Five minutes, I'm done, and I've saved my energy, and I feel good, ready to go into the game. And you're really getting your hands through that quick, though. Yeah, I'm trying for pull. This is something almost I feel on the day of a game gets me going the most is a, a pull shot. You know, in, in a game as well, if someone bangs one in, it seems to wake you up. Yeah, I'm trying to be powerful, and then I might do a few coming forward. So you've done that. You've had your underarms, had the pull shots, do a few cuts. What now? Day of a game, that's me finished, and um, I feel like the rest of it is more about. Um, a little bit of visualisation. Get quite, mentally, you're mentally in, ready. in the game. You know, the, like I was talking the day before, you should know, trying to get a gauge of what bowlers bowl when, what deliveries they bowl under pressure. For me, it's very important to try and build up a picture of what's going to come, who I'm going to face. Um, that is easier with experience because if you've come across guys before, uh, so you've got to gauge on their action. Um, a little bit. If there's someone I haven't played against, um, you know, when they're warming up, I might just. See if I can get a bit close to them and get a bit of a you know, watch of their action. Oh, they're all at it already. Well, it's an overused term, isn't it? 360 cricketer. But that's exactly what he is. The fine leg is up. 
explain how you play the ramp shot. Yeah, so the ramp shot for me, I'm, I'm starting in my normal stance. I've got this movement, I um, don't know why. It's like a it, dummy, isn't it? A little bit of a dummy, but it just, I feel like because I go offside of the ball, this pushes me that way. Right. Um, I don't want to be in line with the ball necessarily. I'm actually trying to get this side of the ball. Just before um, you go, is this pure, this is 100% premeditated, is that right? 100% premeditated. So, as he gets to the end of his mark, I'm almost. I'm trying to say, if I'm not 100% in, I'm not. I'm not going for it because your success rate, if you're not, is you got to be brave and you got to commit to it. To start with, if I was just practicing this shot, I'd actually stand like this. So I changed my grip, so it's almost like a frying pan. If you just throw a few, then I'm just trying to. It looks very simple. Just I'm rolling this side of it. I'm trying not to use my wrist. I'm trying to actually let you almost bounce the ball on my bat. So it's a so deflection, actually. So I'm, just, than I'm trying else. to use your pace. Um, so actually, the, if, I, if I'm trying to do this, then my timing and everything else has to be perfect. Whereas if I'm just holding the bat there and I'm just trying to let you hit my bat, basically, and I'll use all your pace to generate getting over a, uh, a 45. So uh, if I just stand, so a little. That's the other reason I quite like doing it in this way. Is so you've dug one in there. And because I'm still upright, I can manage to... So that's almost, the one you hit for six, pretty So much. almost help it, yeah. So I, I feel like here I've got a chance with the varying different deliveries, whereas if I was going for the Dilshan and you bowl a bouncer, I can't, I can't get that. Shot. I see the whole rhythm and everything there. Yeah, and I think that's really important to keeping the pace on the ball. Um, the rhythm of the shot, I think, is almost the, the biggest thing. I, I, for me, I think that's been something I've worked on, is making it a smooth movement. That's why I think this, that backward press, almost make, gets me into a nice rhythm. I'm almost trying to roll round the ball and roll underneath it. So it's coming, I'm, I'm saying, right, I'm going for the shot. See that one as well, actually a little bit more back of a length. But that's the ball I feel like I can then access. Behind, like yeah, behind. almost over the keeper. Right, so that's the one over fine leg, but then the captain, he just sends fine leg back, as nearly everyone does for you now. Third man comes up. How do you get it over third man? A couple of different variations of that one, actually. If he's up, um, I'd probably go to an actual reverse sweep. So against the seamer, I don't move my feet for a reverse sweep. If you throw the same, actually trying to stay in a similar position. I've gone away from just trying to deflect it that way. I actually quite like, because I want to almost get it up and over. So I'm, I'm trying to, so I'm almost dipping my knees, getting underneath it, changing my grip round and trusting myself that I can help it on its way. Whenever you're playing these shots, reverse sweeps or um, premeditated risky shots, the odds are generally in your favour because you're taking into account all the information that's given to you from a bowler and the captain of their field um, to then make the decision that actually this is a good shot to play at this particular time. Oh, he opens up, he opens up. What a shot that is. It's gone all the way. Fast hands, outstanding batting. Now, the other thing that I think you do brilliantly is you use this bottom hand. I was always taught you use the top hand and you just got to play that, keep this out of the game. But you actually do differently. Peterson was the same, Coley the same. That gives you bat speed. Is that why that comes in? For me, I always want this hand on the bat and I actually can't keep hold of the bat yeah. uh, far enough in the, unless I start to roll my, my wrist. So that actual, almost a check drive is good for me or then this starts to come in. And it basically for me came a little bit from Again, exploring how can I get more power. For me, being a right-sided person, this motion and movement um, felt very natural. Um, and I felt I can actually hit the ball in that position. And also for me, I started to think about Yorkers. So if, if I'm digging out a Yorker and they're gonna bowl six Yorkers, how can I get the middle of my bat closer to, to a Yorker? So if I can get lower and actually have my bat at an angle, and I've got more chance of actually get accessing... Rather than doing this. You're yeah, right. rather than doing that. If I know he's going to bowl a Yorker, well, how, why don't I get down here and use my hands, use your skill and your talent to get the best part of your bat nearer to where the ball is going to be. So, and also another way of doing that is, is to change your grip. So 
someone's really getting them in there in their back. So I'd actually almost change my grip round to this side. So then my face is more open and again, accessing the best part of my bat to where the ball is gonna be. So that's exactly that shot then? So that's that shot, you see I'm almost holding, my feet don't really move again, almost holding that position and then I just want to hit the ball as hard as I can really, that's how it came to me to start doing this because I feel like I can hit the ball harder in that, that way. And also again about that shot, become more aware of in the last few years about the power of you know, that baseball movement that so you can almost bring the hips in. Yeah, so I'm almost trying to use the same. It's my hand speed, but this can fire as, as well to, to create power. And what about go leg side? So the yeah. next ball that he bowls, all right, if, as long as it's in the right sort of spot, you do the same thing even if you want to take it over the leg side? Not as much. Uh, for me, leg side, uh, if I'm trying to hit sixes this side, I'm trying to think of a nice long swing. Back in my crease. Shot. Sure. And so almost, actually it's a bit more of an extension with that rather than the quick flick. Yeah, I'm trying to hit long almost through those. Um, that quick flick for me has started to come in naturally. But I think I've practiced it a lot and if I get a ball that I feel like I can't do that to, then that sort of comes in. But also I'm trying to think about trajectory, especially when I practice. I try and think about long and flat as opposed to hitting the ball High. up. So if I'm going back and I'm thinking up, to think about elevation, I'm almost staying back, which is a position I don't want to be in. So if I'm thinking about hitting long, I'm almost going through, I feel like I'm in a long, better position, more powerful position, and the trajectory is actually really important um, to gain maximum distance. Oh, that's gone. Long, long way. Been in the nets, you're all warmed up now. So the challenge is I'm gonna set a field, it's the start of a T20 game, you've got a left armor at you yet again, and I just want to see how you go about planning an innings, alright? Yeah, no problem. Perfect. So if he comes now, we'll have a look. We've got a point, third man, keeper obviously, fine leg is up, deep square is back, we got a mid on, a mid off, I'm gonna come in at extra. We probably got a mid wicket as well. Oh, no run, good start, well done. First ball, you're just having a look all the time? Not all the time. Um, actually, first ball, a lot of the time, I actually walked down the wicket. I probably should have done it then. Uh, <laughs> Sharp. Okay. So you took a couple of steps down. I yeah. saw you do that, actually, I think, at Bristol the other day. Why take a couple of steps down? Uh, I like it, it's a positive move for me. I'm trying to put something back on the bowler. So left armour, brand new ball, maybe a little bit of shape. Um, he said you had a mid wicket, but especially if he was at slip, I'd have definitely moved first ball because in my eyes, you're probably going to be targeting the stumps. Maybe you've got a slip, but you're trying to bowl. So if I actually come down and get just as I'm backing myself to hit a straight ball, I feel like it's a positive move for me. It puts something on you as a captain because I'm actually now in a position where you know, I'm, I'm backing myself to hit a straight ball. If, it, if you're going to swing one back and hit me on the pad, it's going to be out whether I'm here or back here. Probably negates it more if I'm down here. So you're actually bringing it into your favour? No, actually bringing it into my favour a bit. All right, same field. Spawn oh, run. shot, four runs. All right, that time you went back? Uh, just to something else. Felt like he would now change his mind. Uh, so a little bit of cat and mouse. I felt like he may have gone like a... Uh, off cut a slower ball or something if, if, with me moving, maybe push at it. So those kind of things, I felt like if I come back, he may drop his length back as well because I've been advancing and it might give me a cut or a pull. Right, we're going to change it up now. So now we're going to about the 12th over. You're on 60 or 70. I might be doing you a disservice there. So now I can have a few more men out. I'm going to leave fine leg up. Long on and long off are in, all right? You've got deep square leg, deep cover, backward point, third man is back. Okay. <clears throat> so about the 12th over, let's go. <laughs> oh, shot. 
Right, that is where I feel like I haven't got enough men. So he's, as soon as you've seen that, that's just bread and butter for you, I suppose. I feel, yeah, I think so. I think it's such a big part of my game, even if I don't play it as the opposition captain, having to factor it into plans. The same for the bowler. So um, here, you know, saying 12th over, I'm looking around, I think that's one of my best options. So if I then go to it, straight away again on the bowler, all right, you would go to what you thought was your best field. So now I've taken you hopefully away from that. So you're now going, okay, actually, I've got to move someone, bring someone else, and maybe it's mid off and he goes back. Or... Well, now what I'm going to do now, though, fine leg's going to go back, and I'm going to bring third man up. So third man comes up. I'm also going to speak to the bowler and tell him what type of ball I want him to bowl, which you'll probably have an idea about what that is. Is mid-wicket in? Mid-wicket is in, yeah, but we couldn't afford enough people for that. Shot. Yeah, and that's the problem, I suppose. And that was what, pace on? That was pace on, yeah. So uh, I was just backing myself to get bat on that. I only need a, I, I wasn't the perfect connection or anything, but found a gap. Um, again, it's another shot that you have got to factor in somehow as, as the captain and the bowler. So, uh, and now I feel like I've got, you know, under, you know, I've built an over already through one which I didn't feel was a big risk for me. I felt the odds were in my favour. That one a bit more of a risk. I'm not quite as comfortable doing that. But now I've got two balls left and you, you've gone for maybe nine or ten. And you just milk the rest. So you could almost just, if you didn't have to, 12th over, you're just going to take the rest of the over as it comes. Right, let's change it up again, though. Give him three or four more balls. We'll say it's the last three balls. You just need a boundary every ball. So you've got three balls. What should we say? What do you want, 12? Yeah. Right, 12 off three. Good luck. Catch him. You haven't even hit that anywhere near the middle, all right? It's not the longest boundary, that. No, it's not. Okay, well, let me make another change. You go back, and then I'm going to bring fine leg up again. Come up. But I'm going to tell him what I want him to do. Square leg is still in. Wide off stump York, so wide York here. Catch him! That can't be six. Where's that hit on your bat? Just enough. <laughs> Good now, did you? What ball did you think was coming? So I thought he was going wide Yorker with these two guys up. I either slower, slower ball and wide, or wide Yorker. So I, I thought I may as well stand out here. If he then goes at the stumps. Might bowl me behind my legs, but any bat on that, hopefully I can beat these two guys. Oh, shot. So there he came in at the stumps, and I still thought he was going to bowl out here. So, but you know, if I'm quick enough and able to catch up, I've just got to beat that guy on the ring. And but the absolute key looks to me like you're in a position even though you're thinking one ball's coming, you're in a position where you can still play if it's leg side, you can still play if it's wide of off stump. If it's short, you can still play it. You're trying to keep your options open. I think I, I, I like to move around the crease. I like to move around a lot where I think the ball is going to be. They can bowl different balls, and as bowlers do now, set a field and bowl yeah. the wrong ball. To, you know, bluff has become a very important aspect of the game. But I'm trying to manoeuvre myself into positions which I think bring it into my favour. Um, so. As you would if it was, you know, start of innings, I talked about middle stump, that's my guard. Well, when things change, if he's going to bowl out here, I can't hit the ball everywhere yeah. from out there, so I may as well come out here. If, if there's 90% chance of him bowling wide, I may as well stand there. If he bowls me behind my legs, fair enough if you're brave enough to go for it. But um, I feel like I may as well manoeuvre myself into positions yeah. that allow me to access all the ground. Right, that's the fielding challenge done. So now we're going to have a bit of fun. Going to lob you up a few. We're just going to go for some range hitting. You've got the whole of the oval to go for. Got it. Another six for Butler. This is immense, immense hitting. Oh. 
Oh, not bad, into the second tier. What is the key when you're hitting long like this? So off spin here, I'm looking to use my feet, get some momentum coming down. And then again, like I was talking a little bit earlier about this trajectory of, of thinking long and not up. So um, <clears throat> a little bit, sometimes I'm trying to create elevation with my hands. If I get too close to it, you almost need to help it up. But I'm trying Back? To, back. Yeah, I think not all the time necessarily. It doesn't have to be a long, not long and slow. I'm trying to, again, that impact zone where I'm trying to be really quick, my hands. Oh, shot. What about that one? That's better. I think this is one of the best practices you can ever do as well. If you get the chance to get out on the pitch, it actually gave so much confidence. If you, you know, usually on the edge a bit, so it looks even better, but see the ball going into the stands and, and actually gaining a, a gauge of actually, when I nail it, it's going, you know, well back, even 80% is, is getting there. So when you go into the middle and you're feeling a little bit under pressure, oh, I need a six, well, well, actually, yeah, if I get it, I've got one if I need it. That's the best. That's gone into their dressing room. That has gone through the only open door in the whole thing. That's glass all the way, and that has gone straight through the open door. Good line, that. That's, that's, a... like, that's like one of my approaches, Keezy. There's no way that's one of your approaches. <laughs> that's far too straight. Oh, oh one through the offside. Watch out! Well, the advertiser will be happy. Joss, thanks so much for this Vitality T20 Blast Masterclass. Pleasure. Thanks, mate. Well, strike, mate. <laughs>